Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and I'm going to help you get an Echo Show set up in your own home and sent off to your parents or another senior or somebody who maybe just doesn't understand technology very well. And I'm gonna give you all the tips and tricks that you need to get this working in their home so that all they have to do is plug it in and start using a few commands that you're going to give them in order to have things like video calls or to be able to see pictures of their family and friends. So this is the kind of video that I look for Forward to producing and I hope you look forward to using. Let's go. Down below in the description are time codes that you can jump between as you work through the different segments of this video and the different segments of setting up your Echo Show. This video is meant to be used sequentially when you're actually working to set things up, but you can preview and get the basic idea for the process that you're going to use by jumping through the time codes now. I say that you should use it sequentially because there's actually a lot of little tidbits in the middle of the different sections that will be really important to set this up correctly and not have your parents running into a lot of issues. There are a few things you will need as you go through today's video, but the good news is you need none of these things as you start the process. Everything can be done pretty much at any time when it comes to these four things that I'm going to tell you you need. The first is Wi-Fi credentials for their home, and yes, you will need them 100%. They can use a hotspot, but let's be honest and say that most of our parents are going to struggle setting up a hotspot and then making sure an Echo Show is connected to it. You don't need the Wi-Fi credentials at the start of this process, but before you send the Echo Show, you will need them. And there are some details if they are in an assisted care facility that you might need from an IT or tech person there. If you're sending an Echo Show 15, then you can use something called Visual ID to have them recognized whenever they walk up to that device. It doesn't do a ton today, but if you want to get this set up, then you need four pictures, which you will see later in the video. You'll need some voice recordings of them if you'd like to set up a voice ID for each of them, and they are very simple, and again, you will see which ones you need later in the video. If they have an Amazon account, grab the credentials from that. But if they don't, then in about 30 seconds, I'm going to show you what you do about that. Before I go on to the actual setup process, I'm betting one of the first questions that's on everybody's mind is, why an Echo Show and not an Echo? The answer is very simple, and for those of you who are a little more advanced, you could do an Echo by broadcasting a hotspot in your home during the entire setup process, but I will tell you that this could be fraught with issues for you during the setup of all these different things, and it's unlikely that you'll be able to test things like calling very well. So the answer is that we can change or add an additional Wi-Fi credential on the physical display with an Echo Show, and this gives us a unique opportunity to add in their Wi-Fi credentials while still using your own. The Echo Show also allows features like Bluetooth music playing to continue to work without the need of internet. So there are benefits to an Echo Show over the Echo that I think go just beyond that visual interface that also is really important. The other question that many of you will have is which Echo Show to purchase, and I have a full comparison review of the Echo Show 5, 8, and 10 down below in the description, as well as my review of the Echo Show 15. However, the big critical thing for many of you will be whether or not you want to send some things like motion sensors or lights that are already set up and working with the Echo Show. If you want to do that, there's a segment down below in the time codes called Accessories to Send with your Echo Show. but the Echo Show 10 is the only Echo Show with a Zigbee hub in it, and I would recommend that you use that Zigbee hub because otherwise you will be sending a number of Wi-Fi devices and that not, might not work very well for them. Otherwise, I think the Echo Show 8 hits the mark for a lot of people because of the screen size and the reasonable speaker plus a reasonable price point. However, if you need a little more help with that, then the two links for the reviews are down below. 
And finally, before we move on to the full setup, I want to tell you that there is an ebook, so to speak, that I'm selling with this video. It's really just a list of commands, but the intention is that it goes with this video in order to make sure that your parents have a little book that they can flip open and have a look at to remember any of the commands that they might need. Of course, you could make it your own, and I didn't exactly make a complex thing here, but if you want something that is mostly done, then that's the ticket for you. If you ship that to yourself before you send out the Echo Show, then you will also have an opportunity to modify or add a few additional commands to that book. The link is down below for that. The first thing I did is I went to gmail.com and I created an account for my parents. Now, the point of this is so that they have a completely clean installation and a completely clean new account and gmail is an easy way for many of us to manage this i'm just filling out details as i would for them but i've included my own phone number so that i can go through the verification process to get this account verified and activated so this is a pretty simple process I'm not gonna walk through all of the steps but you start at gmail.com and you create a new account once you've accepted and activated your account then you can actually see the interface for their email for their account and now we're going to head to Amazon and it's going to be in whatever country you're from and we will start the process of creating a new account we will use that email address and you can put in whatever name and password that you'd like. As I went through this process, what I found out very quickly was that they required me to use that email account and I got a one-time password from them sent to me and then I had to verify that I actually had that email address. Then they wanted a mobile number and I went to use my own mobile number but Unfortunately, Amazon's account services actually checks that your phone number hasn't been used with an Amazon account. So I tried a couple of services where they had publicly listed numbers. Those were not working because people had already created accounts. So I actually logged into one of my own Amazon accounts. I have a few of them where my mobile number was being used. And what I did here is that I deleted the phone number. So when I did that, then I could go back through the setup process or the creation process for this new account. And it did verify that I had a phone number for that account. Of course, you could go in right away and delete that account phone number if you'd like, but I would just leave it there for now as it's going to help with verification of accounts going forward. Now that we have the account for your parents and we are ready to go, you want to log in to that account on whatever Amazon website is for your country. From there, we're going to want to fill in some details, but what you can actually do is just go straight to purchasing an Echo Show. Now, if you purchase it under their account, it will actually come pre-set up and ready to configure with that Amazon account. Account. So it does help, but you can fill out a shipping address that is yours to get it sent to you. And you can fill out a payment method that would allow you to purchase the device for them and have it all come to your home. Once the Echo Show arrives in your home, or if you happen to have one already sitting there, then you'll start the setup process. But if you're using an Echo Show you already have, you'll want to head into device options in order to reset it to factory defaults. This will make sure that none of the existing information is sitting on there and this will allow you to configure it with their account. Now if you did go and purchase one, it's just going to boot up to this screen and you're going to be able to select the language. 
Now, we're coming up to the part where we choose a Wi-Fi account, and obviously right now, you might not have the Wi-Fi credentials for your parents, and I would suggest that you just use the Wi-Fi credentials in your own home to connect to initially and not set up a hotspot with your parents' credentials on it because you're going to do a lot of configuration. Next up, you're going to use the Amazon account that you just set up for your parents or if they have their own you're going to enter in those credentials now if they have their own account already there might be a verification here where you need to make sure that you have their device or at least you're able to log into their account now I just had to log into that account on my phone and put in the verification code the next thing you're going to do is set the time zone and you're obviously going to pick the time zone that they are in, not that you're in, and you're going to enter in an address for where they live, not for where you live. Once you're done that, you're going to hit save, and all of these things are helping you start to build the system for them instead of yourself. Now, choose a room, and I would choose a very simple name for the device and you're going to have to choose a name that you think will best suit them because they could refer to the device in order to look at the camera on it in the future if they have a couple of devices. One of the best features here is that you can put photos on their display and what you're going to need is the Amazon Photos app on your phone and then you will be able to upload photos. There's also other ways you can send them pictures. Later on in the video, I'll show you how to configure all of that. Check the time codes if you need that. The next thing is to set up a profile and you might wanna set up a profile for both of your parents or one of your parents at a time. You'll have to have a look at that. Later on in the video, I'll show you how to deal with those profiles. For me, it was actually failing at this point. Do you want the camera to be able to monitor their home? This is a very interesting question for many of us right now. And if you enable it, what you're doing is giving yourself the ability to actually check in using the onboard camera. Of course, it has to be uncovered when you're checking in. So if they've closed the physical shutter, you're still not going to be able to look into the camera. But you have to decide on this from a privacy standpoint. When we talk about Amazon Sidewalk, this is probably not something that many of your parents will be using, but it does help with some things like tile trackers if it's far outside of their home. So it might make sense for you to enable that. The next thing you might get are trials for Amazon Prime. And if you want to start that, you can start a trial that would get you Amazon Prime Video and Amazon Music as well. So those might be nice little add-ons to include. This actually ends the basic setup for your device, but because this is a new account or because this is your parents' Amazon account, you'll want to, on your phone, log in to the Amazon Miss A application. So get the credentials that you've already created for that account or have for that account, and what will happen is you'll end up having to walk through a bit of a process for getting their account working with the voice assistant. The question of, do you want to set up a device? That answer is actually no, because we've already done it. Do you want to get to know the app? You might, but I'm betting most of you know what's going on. Now, this is where you can choose to create a couple of profiles. You can see that the profile I'm using is called My Parents, the next question is whether you want to set up a voice ID. So you'll have to think about that per person in the household if you want to create a voice ID and a profile for each of them. But here are the four recordings you would need from your parents to be able to play out on a mobile device or on something so that your phone could hear. Once you have these four recordings, just play them out during this time and that will create a voice ID for them. The better speaker that you can use, the more accurate that voice ID is going to be for them. So if you use a pretty bad speaker, it 
might not work for them. Do you want to verify the phone number for the account? I would just skip that. And here's how you can add someone else if you'd like. So you can add that second family member already. We're ready to go and the app is ready for us to begin using. So we should be able to have a look at our different devices and you're going to get a bunch of pop-ups and a bunch of explanations of features because you're in the account for the first time. Now, you can see my device was offline, so I did a quick reboot of it and everything started working. My device actually wasn't correctly connecting to my Wi-Fi when we did the initial setup. You shouldn't have that problem. But now we have the ability to explore the interface and start to build some of the other features. So I'm going to show you where you can do voice ID and where you can do visual ID if you're using an Echo Show 15 to save send to your parents. Here is where you're creating the visual ID and I have a pretty good little trick for you again. You do have to agree to the privacy terms, but if your parents have given you some pictures of themselves in the different orientations you're about to see, you can actually get the Echo Show to recognize them as these pictures and it will create the visual ID and it should work pretty well. Again, you want to have good quality pictures and you want to have them in each orientation that the Echo Show requests through this process. It's basically straight ahead, facing both directions and actually tilted up. Then the visual ID is actually saved there. The other thing you can do is create a profile picture for them with that same picture and this will show up whenever the device recognizes them as looking at the screen. Of course, Visual ID does require the camera to be open, so they would need that. But now you have methods for both Visual and Voice ID. There are two ways that we can share some photos with our family members and if you've set up a separate account for them, I think the best way is Amazon Photos. So you need to download that application on iOS or on Google Play Store and then you need to sign in. If you find that this application is installing and then right away it's taking you in with your other Amazon account, then what I'd say is you need to sign out of the Amazon Miss A account and really any other Amazon accounts on your phone and then reinstall the app that brought me to the sign in screen. Do we want to give it access to all of our photos and to back up all of our photos? I don't think so, but you can allow to give access to the photos and media on your device. You can see you're getting five gigabytes of free photo and video storage no matter what. And this is without signing up for Amazon Prime. I don't think we want to back up photos and videos from this device automatically, but we can add photos. You're going to be able to come to this page all the time and just log in with that other Amazon account and then add photos in to their system. So these are very easy ways to pick a couple of photos and upload to their Amazon Photos. If you head into albums, this will help them the most because you can create a new album choose the name of that album and then upload a few items for them. Once you've selected the items you'd like to upload, hit create and this will send all of these photos into this album. It does take a little while for all of them to get uploaded, but once you have them all within this album, anytime you're going into this album, you're able to Tap on the three dots up at the top. You could select to remove some if you wanted to get rid of some. You can also throw the whole album out, but you can always add additional photos. Now that I have an album created, I can head into more and I can say personalize those devices. The screen, which is the name of my Echo Show that I'm currently setting up, is the device I want to use. Daily Memories unfortunately enforces that you turn on autosave, which I don't think many of you are going to want, but we can hit add more collections and choose our album that we just created. 
This is now selected on the device and if you had more Echo Shows that you were sending or Fire TVs, this would allow you to set up photos and at any point upload and update those photos. Before I head to an Echo Show, I'm gonna show you inside of the More page in the Miss A application, I'm going to hit Settings and then I can scroll down to Photos. This shows me all of my devices and it shows me the linked accounts that I have. You're noticing that Amazon Photos is right here and I can set the devices. I can also set upload settings. So if you were sending a phone with this, then you could set the upload settings to be whatever pictures they take. The other thing you can do is link a Facebook account. So that might be a really good option for many of you. If I go and I set the screen here, you can see that we have the collections already added in from the Amazon Photos app. I can also manually select photos from my camera roll to upload. And this might be a really good way to upload things on the fly for them as well. So just keep in mind that you have all these different options for managing photos to come into their devices and just passing it along to them. One of the really tricky things here is that you can use both. So you don't necessarily have to use the whole Amazon Photos application. It's just a bigger bulk way to do it because when you do uploaded photos, the maximum you can do is 10 photos at a time. As you upload those photos one at a time or up to 10 at a time, you can see that you can display it on device. So this becomes a really easy way for you to ad hoc add photos and you can see that both are being displayed at the same time. Some of those pictures that we sent to our parents are sitting here on the display but we also have some other things going on that are going to distract and we'll talk about as we go through managing the photos here uh, on the display itself we'll talk about how to deal with some of that rotating content so I'm gonna head into the settings and there are actually three different pieces we want to go to here to kind of manage the way the display looks the first one is display and brightness now you might want to turn off adaptive brightness if you just want it to be a consistent brightness all the time you can do that if they are planning to put this in their bedroom, you might want to enable the sunrise effect, which if they set an alarm on the device, will gradually turn on the display on its own for 15 minutes before the alarm is going to ring. Next up is a clock and photo display, and this can be a little bit different per Echo Show that you send, especially with the Echo Show 5 being so small and being more intended to be a bedside table device. Now, because we already set the Amazon Photos album, you can see that Amazon Photos has been chosen and we can hit change and go in and choose these other things. So we already selected uploaded photos and we've selected that album for my parents. They can select additional things and of course they can upload their own photos as they go. If you just wanna make this a really, really dead display or not moving around, not changing very often, then you have to choose minimal. And I'll show you some other things that you have to turn off here, but minimal would remove all of these photos. The other thing that I think is really good to do for most people, but might not make sense here, is the auto sleep function, where it will actually turn off the screen after 10 minutes. You'll have to decide if this might confuse them or be a problem in the future. The other thing you wanna have a look at is night mode. You can create a schedule for night mode to turn on, or you can leave it as automatic, which would do it based on available light. If you want it to show a dim clock in instead of turning off the screen, then you want this on. You can turn off the whole night mode feature in general just by tapping there. 
I said we would get rid of some of that rotating content, and this is what I'm talking about here. It's in the home content setting screen. Everything you turn off will reduce a little bit how much is rotating through the device. If you want them to see when you've called or you've sent messaging, then you can leave that on, but it also shows up in the top right of the display when they get calls or messages or things like that. So you don't necessarily even need to turn that on. They definitely don't need to see these kinds of things. They might want something like a continue to watch a video, the discovery, I don't think they want that drop in. This might help if you are the only person or there's only a few people on their drop in or their contacts list that have an Amazon account. Uh, food, fun, all of these things are just distractions in many cases, but you'll have to choose what you want them to have. If you go all the way to the bottom and you turn off all of these, then what will happen is you will create a very quiet display that really should just rotate through the photos in most cases. There'll be a couple of other things that it will rotate through. You can also turn off this rotate continuously option and it slows down everything again. So when we go back now, it's going to go, you can see it's really going to just display the pictures that we've uploaded in most cases. So there you go. This is a lot better for most people. There are a few more ways to customize your display and there's a couple of really great options I think for uh, parents and people who are maybe a little less tech savvy. Now, I went into the settings and I scrolled all the way to the bottom and you can see accessibility. Accessibility in general will be helpful and you'll have to have a look at what you want to include. But if they're maybe having trouble hearing in some cases, then you can turn on closed captioning for different features. There's even captioning for the voice assistant as they speak and there's closed captioning for videos as well as even real-time text in many cases for phone and video calls. So I think this is a really important thing to have a look at to see if you want that. It doesn't work perfectly, but this can be very helpful. The other thing that you can do per section is to change how the captions look. So it might be really important to increase the size of the caption. There are also color inversion and color correction options here. So if you have somebody who maybe can't see certain colors, then you can make that adjustment here. But one of my favorite features is down here at the bottom, which is tap to miss A. And what happens is you get this little icon on the screen. It can be moved around and this creates a number of quick little commands that they can use. So that button will show up all the time and this is a completely customizable uh, screen actually. And you can create shortcuts, routines that they will use on a regular basis that allow them to just tap on things and not try to remember the statements that they need to make. So you can see how just tapping on this brought me to this page, which meant I could tap on music. Playing your personalized station, my soundtrack from Amazon Music. There's also that nice button right there that allows them to stop and you can add new ones. So let me show you that you can create any of the routines inside of the application and then use those commands that you would use in the routines to execute here as just a simple tap function. So I've just said routine one, and now I can pick an icon that makes sense with that routine. So let's say it's their bedtime routine. I'm gonna choose that icon, and it you can name it something different 
than the command that you're putting through. So this becomes really nice for you to give them, okay, here's your bedtime routine. That's all you need to press. And the other thing is you can edit this layout. So first of all, you can adjust the layout to make these really dense on the screen, or I think in many cases, you're gonna wanna go to a low density screen here. So what this gives you is just a few tiles Per screen and they can uh, go ahead and scroll over but the other thing you can do is long hold press and just keep heading over here so you can see how I just move this to this screen and now I can hit done and of course as I'm editing any of these I can get rid of ones that they're not going to use which I think is very important as well so we're logged in to the application with your parents' account, and I'm going to head into the play side of things where we've done no setup. We haven't connected anything at all. What you wanna do is head down to the bottom and to link new services. You can see all the different options that you're going to have as of today, and this list will be different per country that you're in. So we're going to go to manage your services. You can choose the default services and you can explicit language filter if you feel like doing that. But the Amazon Music account is already your account that you've logged into. So if you just go now and you get them a Prime subscription, an Amazon Prime subscription, then they will have Amazon Music, which is most of the audio library. There's actually a second tier called Amazon Music Unlimited that you might want to get them that gives them access to everything in the library. But there are some free services that we can connect and iHeartRadio is a really uh, good one here in Canada for radio stations. Spotify also has a free service and you can connect any account you would like to this Spotify service. So you could manage this one or it could be their account. The same holds true for Apple Music and Apple Podcasts as well as, well as many of these other services. Amazon Music also has a free tier, so don't feel like you're stuck. And TuneIn is available pretty much everywhere in the world. So what's great about this is this is how you can just ask for basically any radio station in North America, as far as I can tell. Choosing the default music service does tend to be important. And you can do it differently by podcasts and by different artists or genres. So if you want to say, okay, just play music and pick a certain service, you can do that differently than some of these other podcast services. For many of our parents, I think the biggest thing they're going to use is the radio station and you're going to want to give them a couple of those commands, maybe on a written note or even on a sticky note on the screen if you're sending an Echo Show 15. From the video standpoint, a lot of the work can be done on the Echo Show itself, but I'm going to show you that you can go into the More page and then Settings and head down to TV and Video. When we come to this page, what I'll tell you is that you don't really need to do the Prime Video linking. You might need to link some of these other services though. There's so many of these, I can't go through all of the different ways that you have to link things and what works and what doesn't. So you'll have to test that out a little bit with your own TV provider. But in general, it's better to head to the visual interface on your Echo Show for this one. One of the best things we can set up for our family is video. So obviously swiping down, they can get to the video home, but they can also ask Miss A to go to video home. That would bring them to this page. They can also ask to play things from different services that you have connected and you will have to connect in the case of services like Netflix, an account in order to have that work. 
You can see these shows down here, but in most cases, these are Prime Video. And anytime you try to go into Prime Video, play any movie or TV show here, you're going to get a statement Please that... Buy or rent Bloodshot to watch it on Prime Video. For some of these other things like YouTube, this is going to open up a web browser and we would need to configure this in some cases. It's up to you how far you want to go here, but I think what you can do is to create a number of bookmarks for your family member. You can edit the ones that are here. They can quickly go to those different bookmarks. So let's say that we're at a web page that we know our parents are going to like. To add this as a bookmark, it's that simple. And to tell them how to get to their bookmarks is just up here. This will allow them to do things very quickly on the web browser. Now, the command they're going to want to use is to open Silk or to open YouTube or whatever one of these basic things. This is, again, something you might want to put in the tap to miss a feature. The other thing you'll want to do here is to go into the settings and some adjustments. Now, accessibility is always something that we want to have a look at here, and I think we want to expand the size of text. There's also the ability to adjust closed captions, but in general, that's only going to be for video content that works with this. The other thing you might want to do is head into the advanced settings and change the search engine being used so that they get more consistent search engine results like they do from whatever phone they're using. Passwords allows you to automatically save some passwords. So I think it's a good idea to head to a couple of the websites that you know they frequent. If you can get their username and passwords, you can log in and have those automatically saved so they don't have to remember that every time. You can also change web scaling. You can see that you can continue to make this bigger and bigger. And they should know that they can zoom in on any of the web pages. One of the biggest things you're going to want to be able to do is to call each other, video call each other, or communicate. And what you have to do in their account is start by going into the communicate tab. Now, you will probably get a few notices for enabling communication. Yes, you do have to do those kinds of things, but there's more to do here, and there's one really important step that you have to start with. That is to go to the More page, and then you go to Settings. You'll head into Your Profile and Family, and then you will tap on the profile for the person that you will be most often calling, or you might have two profiles here. What you have to do is set a mobile number for them here. And so they are about to get a text message with a six digit code on it when you do this. This verifies their phone number as a miss a contact. And what that means is it puts a blue check mark next to their name as a miss a to miss a contact. So that's the most important thing that you can do. That will mean that your contact in the list for your parents will then show up with a blue check mark. It might not happen right away. Give it a day or so and those check marks will start to show up. The other thing that you need to do for them is to decide how many contacts they're going to have. Now you probably have the import contacts feature turned on and I would say that you want to cancel that for their account and just in general on your phone, you don't wanna be importing all of your contacts that might just confuse things. Once you've done that, then you can add in new contacts. What you'll want to make sure is that this phone number is the one associated with their Amazon account in that same exact spot that I just showed you over here in the profile section. This absolutely needs to be their phone number. And I know I showed earlier on in the video how 
on the Amazon account, you could initially use your phone number to get this going, but this has to be theirs, or what happens is it breaks communication in all your accounts. As you add new contacts, one of the things that you can do is to give them a nickname. So that's maybe the nickname, if you're adding yourself here, that's maybe the nickname your parents gave for you. And you will choose that relationship as the son or the daughter of whomever you're sending this to. The other thing you can do is you can add groups of contacts. So you have to enable that feature in general and it does take the number to be associated with the account before you can do that. Once you've added a group or a contact, then you can use those names to call those groups or they can do it on the interface like this. Video call smart home groupies. Calling the group. Smart home groupies from Brett. And Brian, welcome. Dial. Great, thank you so much for joining the call today. There are a few other things we wanna do here in communication while we're here. You want to set an emergency contact and you're going to obviously choose probably yourself and you're going to choose the phone number associated with that. This means that they can use terms like call for help or call my emergency contact. The other thing that you'll want to do is set the Miss A to phone contacts. And what happens here is you can set 10 people within your contacts list as people that you can call. Number one, they want you to link your mobile account. And this is why the feature is basically only in the US at this point, because you can link some of these account types. Once you've done that, then you can choose to add any 10 of the contacts and this will mean that they can call those people directly from their echo show any other phone numbers that they try to call at that point will not work so this is a really important component for you to set up and if you have to in the future come into the app and change or add different contacts that they might want to call with their echo show there are a few more communication settings and we just saw this page, but this is really important for group calling because you have to have the advanced or the enhanced features rather uh, enabled here in order to allow group calls, group drop in, and there's gonna be other features they're kind of saying in the future. The very last thing that you do need to check before you send this is to make sure that the devices you're sending actually have communication enabled on them. So you have to go into the device settings itself, make sure that communications says it's enabled. You'll also have to choose whether you want announcements and drop in available on the device. It might make sense to send a couple of routines with this Echo Show, but Let's be clear that this might really confuse some people and I think it might make a lot of sense to send it without and then add those things at a later date, which you can do if you just logged in to their account. But there's a couple of really simple routines that we can create that might be really helpful and I'm going to show you some of the best ways to create routines that are really effective. All of the featured routines are ones that you should probably have a look through and things like the weather after the alarm. If there's someone who likes to set an alarm clock, you can set those alarms here in the application for them in the more page. You could just head into the alarms and do that. So something like the weather after alarm is really easy to just choose and you just have to enable this. You can adjust what other things happen after so it could report the weather and then it could also report something like a daily briefing which is all of the news. One of the really great features about routines for you is that the activity will show up here and what I'm going to tell you about this is if you send devices from our devices you can send or accessories you can send, like this motion sensor paired with an Echo Show 10, then that trigger of a routine would show up here. So this is actually a place you can come to see if the routines are both running and working and 
if someone's moving around their home and triggering devices like this. Some of the basics for routines that you might want to use as you send this. The voice capability is really important, obviously, but it's going to be hard to remember all these different phrases that you're going to send. One of the most important things is that you can send multiple sayings. So if I have saying, I can also add a second phrase called saying one. And now that I've put in both of these, they can both trigger the start of a routine. So they don't have to say things perfectly and you really need to think about the different ways that they would say phrases like to call someone or I wanna talk to my son. Well, you can put that in as a phrase and you can also say I'd like to talk to Bob or I'd like to talk to Frank or whatever you want to add here. Obviously schedules are something that's going to be useful but you can also set different days and different times so you can create different routines for different days and times. All you have to do is to remove a couple of the days by tapping on there and that will allow you to set the time differently per day. Sunrise and sunset is very useful too, and you get to set the time offset as well as the location that you're looking at sunrise or sunset happening. Both of those as triggers can be very powerful. From a smart home perspective, it's gonna depend what you send. But one of the things with Echo Shows these days is that they can actually detect when people are around or when they aren't detected. A lot of you will wanna use this instantly for uh, turning on lights around the display. What I'll tell you is that it will work sometimes, but it's not a perfect feature. This is more something I would use just to know when people are around the device. And the camera does have to be open for that to work. What I do think is effective is when people aren't detected in the space, you can turn off the lighting. But again, you wanna think about that if I was putting an echo show in a place like an office or an extra bedroom that they came into, I might use this because it takes like 10 to 15 minutes in many cases for it to decide that people are no longer in the room. If you turn that on and then they're sitting in the room, well then they might end up sitting in the dark in a room. So really think about those triggers. That's where things like motion sensors and even presence sensors are going to be more effective. From a location perspective, you might wanna know when they leave their home address, you've gotta set that. Uh, you can set it as arrives or leave and you can set this for other locations so you can pick any place that they frequent so if they go to the grocery store all the time that becomes part of their routine well you can enter that address in and when they arrive there you can know about it if you'd like alarms are very useful to use as a trigger for routines you can see an alarm is dismissed then we have a bunch of actions that can go on what you'll want to do probably is to create a active time or a secondary condition. So probably don't want to start reading the weather if the alarm goes off at four in the afternoon, you might only care until 9 a.m. There's one other feature here that's really important. So if you're using things like motion sensors or other devices going along with this, or you're just even trying to use that people detection thing, you can suppress that the routine will re-trigger and re-trigger for a number of minutes or hours. That kind of a feature will stop it from happening again and again. If you can find echo buttons, they're actually really useful still to this day to send along with these, but these have become hard to find. They're really big buttons and they're US only. So that becomes a bit of a difficult one. I don't think the sound detection or the guard triggers are really, really useful here and you need an echo to use the guard function anyways. From the action standpoint, I think that you're going to understand most of these. And if you don't understand all of these, then I have a full guide 
on how to use routines in general, plus some really great tips and tricks. Those videos are down below in the description. Obviously from a smart home perspective, if you have other devices you're sending along, that's going to be something you can use as a action. You can also communicate with them in a lot of different ways, including customized responses. So if they've walked into the kitchen and it's early morning, maybe you want to just say, hey, good morning, remember to take uh, medication or something like that. Audible books, this is a really interesting one. If they just want to have a certain book read out, which you can just call my book, and then it reads the last one that's been read under this account, you can actually have that start to be read out by your Echo Show. This doesn't have to be an Audible book either. This is for any books, and those are inside of the play section for entertainment. You don't actually need to do anything here from the book perspective other than make sure that the book has been purchased under their account and then it is something that you can have read out. If you do decide to connect a calendar, which I think is maybe a lot for people, you can have today's calendar read out or tomorrow's calendar or the next event at any time. When you go into calling, this is obviously a really important component and look, we're being told, oh, we need a carrier account to use calling controls. But this is where one of the most important features comes in for Amazon's routines and this is the custom action. So if we want as an action to call my son, then this will cause the device to make that phone call. You can also preview to make sure it's working, to make sure your nicknames and all of those things are working. But this can become a customized action. And the unfortunate part is you can only add one of those customized actions per routine. But this really helps you to do things like read certain books or to create phone calls that are easier for them to remember. You can also do custom things on your Fire TV, like open up sh certain shows. Uh, there's a lot of depth that you can put into a custom command. So really have a look at what you want to shorten for, for them from that custom command perspective. The other things you'll probably want to send along are the device settings. So you might want to set that volume to a low spot on certain devices. You can send them announcements on their different devices, on the different Echo shows that you're sending, and you can send them notifications if you get their phone logged into this application. From the music perspective, this is where, again, they might have a real preference for a certain radio station or a certain uh, artist or, a, or even a playlist that they've created or you've created for them on Amazon Music. And this is where I'm going to refer you to another video where I have all the tips and tricks that you can use with these commands right here. There is a lot of depth. From the news perspective, you know, this is coming from a setting here in the more section. So you'll go into settings and then you'll scroll down and find news. From the news perspective, so if you just ask to play the news or your parents ask that, you're going to have just a few options. It's going to depend on your country. And then if you're asking for that flash briefing, which is what we just saw in routines, then we're going to head into add content. And this is where you can get news from around the world, from lots of different sources. And you know, there's comedy, there's all kinds of different sources and you can add these different ones. You just have to enable them. Some of them will require an account. So it really depends. But once you've enabled one of those, it becomes part of that flash briefing and you can always turn it off if you don't want that. I think in general, you don't want news notifications, so you're probably going to turn that one off. Something else that I'm going to refer you to another video is the skills section. So I'm not going to give you a bunch of skills that you should send along with this. 
if you're looking for a specific skill for a specific reason, like exercise or something like that, you'll be able to pick that skill as an action to start up and walk them through. I have a whole video on how seniors can use Miss A and the voice assistant uh, a little better and it identifies a lot of skills. One really important feature, I think, for you to break up these routines or make them work the right way is the wait command. And this can really help from the perspective of maybe you just want to give them a little bit of time to execute something or to do something before you tell them to do something else. So that's just five seconds, but you can wait a very long time within a routine. The problem with waiting a very long time is that a lot of different things can interrupt this and it doesn't make the routine very reliable. So I would say waiting for short periods is more effective than trying to wait for long periods. Just a quick thing on reminders and timers. I think a lot of people are going to know how to create reminders for specific time periods. You're going to want to define where it's being announced from and at what time during the day. You can also send it to that Miss A application, which you'll have to get them logged into on their phone. Reminders can also be set at a location, but this is based on the phone. So have a look at that again if you are sending a phone or they have a phone already. A couple of other things for the phone notifications. You can send the notifications to the phone and you can even send text messages to the phone number that you've enabled under this profile. The number of times an announcement goes out might be really important for you. And this is how you can get notifications in case it's entirely missed. I think this might annoy people more than it helps you, but I think it's okay to do it a couple of times and then move on. The same sort of situation is here for alarms. You can add them at any time. You can choose the device, you can choose if they repeat, and you can even choose the sounds associated with them, including some premium if you wanna pay for that. Timers are things that are going to be set on the device itself, so we're not gonna talk about that very much, but you might wanna have a look at the timer settings, which can be set at a different volume uh, for those timers and for those alarms. So make sure that both of those have settings that are appropriate for the ring volume that you want. Lists and notes are something that you can do for them as well. If there's certain things that you need to add to their shopping list, this is a really great way to get them into a routine where they add a few things to the shopping list and then they can access that at any time. One of the great features with an Echo Show is that you can ask for the shopping list at any time and it's even something that they can manually remove items from. There's also this ability to create custom lists, so if there's anything else that you wanna track for them, you can do that. The other thing is notes, and this might be hard for them to remember that they did it in some cases, but uh, what is really great about this is that at any point, you can ask Miss A to remember something, like where they store something. And if they as a user request at any point, what do you remember about this? This item or this thing that I'm looking for right now, then Amazon will actually repeat that back to them. This is now going in to sticky notes. So when you save one of those, you can pin it to a device and this is only going to work on the Echo Show 15 at the moment but it could expand as widgets get to more of the other Echo Shows. Before we get this sent off let's take a little walk through through some of the basic settings that you're going to want to make sure are all working before the device goes out. You're going to want a profile per person and you do need to log in and out of the application or switch between the profiles 
and make sure that things like communication are set up correctly per person in the household. Don't forget to do that. You've actually got to go out and log out of the application, which is down here at the bottom of settings. And more importantly than a lot of these is the adaptive listening mode. So this will actually have the device listen a little more if they're maybe taking a little extra time to get something out. They're going through their memory. I mean, I have this problem all the time myself. I turn on adaptive listening mode. It usually gives me an extra second to kind of get that word out. From a notifications perspective, you're going to want to go through this and turn off a lot, I think, because this will overload the device in many cases. If you've set up things like their favorites on the finance or sports inside of the application, do you want them getting little notifications on the device or on the app? I think in a lot of cases you don't. The one that you might is Amazon Shopping. If something's delivered, I really like the delivery notification myself, but that's this is again something up to you. There's a lot of different things here that you're probably going to want to turn off if you do some Amazon shopping under their account for them. Announcements, you've got to make sure that's enabled or that won't happen at all. And from the calendar and email perspective, if you do connect a calendar, you have to add an account through the settings here. This will, uh, you can cause all kinds of notifications for events coming up. And I think in general, you don't want to have that kind of a setting turned on where it's 10 to 7 a.m. where it's going to announce notifications in case something happens. You'll be waking them up in the middle of the night and then they'll get mad and throw the Echo Show probably. That calendar perspective, we've already run through a little bit on this, but you can add an account and you can manage these accounts at any point. These are the three types that I have access to. It can actually change in different countries. So add whatever type of calendar you'd like and then you can create notifications and you can put things into their schedule that show up on screen. With widgets on the Echo Show 15, they can actually navigate their calendar just by tapping on the screen, or they can use a command like open my calendar or just simply calendar to see what's up for them today. Uh, Missy privacy is something that you'll want to review. I'm not going to tell you how to do these things, but this is a big section where you want to go through and you want to decide whether they can do things like enable deletion by voice or how long they want to save those recordings. You can choose things like don't save those recordings. Make sure you have a read though as you do that because it does sometimes affect how the voice assistant performs for them. If you're sending along a device like a phone or another speaker, then you'll want to do the Bluetooth pairing before the device goes out the door. You could do this really easy with cell phones or tablets if they'd rather use that kind of a system. And just to pair the devices as simple as you're seeing on the screen now by going to the pair new device on the phone or tablet and entering into Bluetooth on the Echo Show as well. Then the two will make a connection after you've tapped on the device that you'd like to pair on your Echo Show. From there, they'll be able to use a command like enable Bluetooth or turn on Bluetooth at all times. And then as long as Bluetooth is on within the tablet or phone that you're sending, it will make that connection automatically, which is a really easy experience for them. Make sure that the do not disturb mode is turned off on the physical device, but you might want to go into the settings and have a look at do not disturb mode to maybe turn that on in the evenings. Make sure that the camera has that home monitoring feature turned on and you may want a delay and an audio alert when someone is looking at the camera. Voice responses is really good to come into because you can really improve a few of the things that go on with these. Brief mode keeps it quiet. It will just sometimes even respond with a little ding instead of any voice response. Whisper mode's great in the evenings. If 
they want to whisper at the device, it will whisper back. It won't be so loud. And adaptive volume helps in noisy situations for it to respond a little louder or a little quieter if the room is quiet. For the device that you're sending itself and for other products that you're sending, which you're going to see in just a few moments, make sure that they are added into groups inside of the Amazon application. And finally, make sure that their preferred speaker is chosen if you are sending a Bluetooth or another device with it. If you are in the US, then down at the bottom here, and I think this will expand to more countries, is called Miss A Together. This is a subscription service that does cost quite a bit. Right now you can get a pretty good trial, but what happens is there are fall detection devices being developed by companies, and I think there are a few available today. Um, you can get those, pair them with the Echo Show, and then you can get notifications or allow them to automatically call for help. There's also a notification for emergency things. And the other thing is you're able to drop in directly on their device. So this becomes an important feature, I think, for many of you from that drop-in perspective, because the difference between a call and a drop-in is that a drop-in doesn't have to be answered by them. But remember, you have access to this Amazon account. If you've done everything the way that I've shown you here throughout this video, you have access to this account. So there are the cameras that you can see directly by going in to this section. This is the camera on that device and we can open that up as long as the shutter is open. Obviously that would work for any other cameras too that you send or you get set up in their home. The other thing that I've shown you in today's video is inside of routines. These are, this is the activity. So anytime if you're sending those motion sensors or other things along with this, they're triggering routines or they're even just using their voice to start a routine you can see that activity right here in the application. So I think in a lot of cases, the Miss A together is a bit over the top for what most of us will need. But this is good for that drop-in feature where you can just drop in and say hello at any time instead of calling. And they do have that professional immediate uh, emergency response. So you can see it's 24 seven urgent response. That might be really helpful to you. And this allows you to pair the two accounts together, see the activity feed, see what they're doing, all the interactions they're making with all the devices they have in their home. You can set additional people for them to call. And there are some of those fall detection devices. Although there are many accessories that you can send along with the Echo Show that you're sending, there are some really good ones that will probably help you quite a bit. I have a whole video on motion sensors that work with Amazon and their Echoes and Echo Shows. This is a Zigbee motion sensor. And so you would have to send this one with an Echo Show 10 if you're sending an Echo Show. But this helps you to trigger routines with motion and it does take a battery. Most of the motion sensors will, but that will help you. And really the same holds for this device right here. This is a contact sensor and it has, and I have paired it with an Echo before. So again, it's a Zigbee contact sensor. Now the other idea is to take a Zigbee light bulb with an Echo Show 10 that you're sending. Then you can basically pair this directly and you don't have to worry about Wi-Fi credentials on something like this. It can be very useful. You can name the bulbs everything you want them to and you can set up routines that will control them just as they're screwed into a light socket these can be controlled automatically at a certain time or based on other sensors like this going off.
sitting here that I'm very nervous about because all you got to do is put your hand under this device and it spits out soap all over the place and then it actually runs a counter here and for 20 seconds and it pairs directly with an echo speaker so this is actually a really good option to send along with it all your parents would have to do is fill it with some soap it's a very easy device to set up and the instructions tell you how to pair it with your echo speaker right away this is the Amazon air quality monitor sensor. Now, it is not something you want to put in the bedroom at all times, but this is a great indicator for many of us as to what the air quality is. What's really great is I'm finding that the announcements come out when the air quality has become really bad in my home, and then this light goes red. One other device, if you can get your hands on it, is this Amazon Build It printer. And why I say this one might be interesting is because it's a sticky note printer. You'll have to send along probably some more reels of sticky notes. Some reasons that this is very easy to send along is because you can print simple things like Sudoku puzzles or mazes, or you can also print out things like shopping lists. So this becomes actually a really good accessory for some of the basics that you might want with your Amazon Echo Show. I wanted to include some ideas for buttons, but unfortunately, most of the buttons are going to be a difficult setup for you, and you can't manage things like flick buttons remotely. So you could set them up and send it, but you'll need to work with Wi-Fi credentials or know that they have an Ethernet switch available, and then you can't really modify flick switches when they are remote to your location. In in terms of Fire TVs, they're a little hard to send too because the remote will often be paired with the television. If you happen to have the same television as them, you could send one and then you would have to work with those Wi-Fi credentials and for that one, I might set it up with a personal hotspot turned on. Just understand that you might have an update that runs through that. I've included this last idea for a product because I think it's just a really, really simple implementation of, quote unquote, a smart device. Now, this is the link kind, and you can see it's a one key remote control and a smart dimmable A19 hub. Now, this is a Zigbee bulb, and this is actually a Zigbee remote as well. So you can turn it on and off. It's very simple, and what's really great about this remote is... You can hold it and it will dim and wherever you let go is where it will stop. Now, you can go all the way down to the bottom of brightness and then when you hold again, it starts to bring the bulb brightness back up. So, it's a really great remote. It's been very simple. It has some mounting hardware as well. It's a magnetic backing and then they could, if they wanted, either stick it onto a surface or screw it in with some included hardware. Now I have tried to pair this bulb with a Zigbee hub in my Echo or Echo Show 10 and unfortunately you can't pair with both. But I think this is a really great option to just set beside them just like the picture shows here wherever they sit and then they can have uh, a button to control what is a smarter piece of lighting. Throughout the video I have shown you a number of features and settings that you have probably tested right when you did them, but I'm betting for many of you, the video or voice calling might be kind of hanging out there. So I do want you to make sure that you test in your own home where you're calling between an Echo or an Echo Show that's connected to your account to the Echo Show that's set up for your parents and vice versa. We didn't specifically speak about Zoom video calling in today's video, but if you need that, there is a link down below for that one. I find Zoom video calling to be pretty difficult on these Echo shows, so I would rather you try and do group video calling in most cases. The idea that I would find useful around Zoom calling is to put a calendar request into their calendar that you synchronized, and then it should be a command of just join the Zoom meeting when it comes time. 
Test things like the ability to take pictures on the Echo Show and where it goes in their Amazon account. Test your routines if you've created any and test the ability to play music and video before this Echo Show heads out. If you're sending accessories, you definitely need to test those with the Wi-Fi setup for their home. And that is your big task before this device goes out. You need to input the Wi-Fi credentials for your parents' home into the device, then you absolutely should do a test with your personal hotspot using their credentials to make sure that it connects. You'll also wanna turn off your home's in-home Wi-Fi just to make sure that it connects to that Wi-Fi hotspot and then everything works correctly. You just need to make sure that it connects to the Wi-Fi hotspot that you've set up and as long as you have all the credentials correct, everything should go great when it gets to your folks home. The other thing you might want to do is to go back into your Amazon account and make sure that each account has the correct phone number in it or to delete the phone number from both Amazon accounts. This isn't the profile phone number in the Amazon Miss A app, though those do have to be accurate for video calling and voice calling to work. But if you follow the process in today's video, then you will probably have your phone number in your parents' Amazon account. Otherwise, many of you will still need a little bit of help and so down below there's a comment section where I will respond to specific issues or questions you might have about this. Also sometime when a video lives for a long time on YouTube, parts of the process might change that are difficult to follow. So check the pinned comment which will be right at the top of all the comments to make sure that there's not some critical piece of information you need. The other thing that will help you are some of the other videos that I've created which delve into routines and getting the most out of those. Hidden tips and tricks with your Echo Shows and some of those comparison reviews and reviews if you're still picking an Echo Show. Plus there's a full walkthrough of the Miss A application in case you need to find something else that we didn't talk about in this video. All of those videos are in the playlist that's up on screen now. So if you head there, you're going to be able to do just about anything with your Echo Show and so will your parents. Otherwise, thanks for watching today and of course, don't hate, automate.